I don't think there's any use trying to do much more with this until we paint it. And uh, I think this little photo etch part that we put on yesterday is probably stuck on uh, about as good as I need to. I was thinking of uh, taking the applicator here and going around and uh, try and reinforce it a little bit. But if you remember, yesterday we could see the uh, uh, CA Thin running and wicking its way around pretty good. So uh, I think this is probably good enough here. Um, yeah, what we have to do now is find photo etch piece B40. And uh, that is, where was it? I did see it a minute ago. Right there, B40. Okay, here is our number 40 right here. I doubt if you can read the number 40. But trust me, it's this little tiny piece right here. And uh, the reason I'm zoomed way back like this is so that you can see just how small it is in comparison to everything else. Once again, that's sort of for perspective. Uh, yeah, we'll put the macro lens on here. And uh, Oh, by the way, this is going to be the very first time we've tried our new and improved uh, photo etch custom cutter or whatever you want to call it. Uh, yeah, well, let's put the micro lens on. I only get one shot at this. There's only one number 40. If I screw it up, and I want to get as close as I can I think that's about it. And now I'm just going to press down. Okay. It didn't go pop this time. Now this one here. Get as close as I can. Is that as close as I can? I think that's it. Okay. Well, maybe this is not the best place to look at this, but I, I think we did pretty good there. Uh, if, if you'll notice, right, right along this edge here that I'm just touching right now, you can hardly see where, where this tab here you know where it was uh, at least from my perspective maybe you can see it a little clearer than I can and maybe you can see that it's not as good as I think it is anyway now I'm planning on using the the black brass here to darken this little piece and may as well do the latter as well and if it doesn't work out well, then I can always paint the, you know, paint the ladder. But remember, when we used this same piece uh, before, uh, using the black brass, darkening it with the black brass worked really well. Now, I just had the thought, just a few minutes ago, that is, would I have been better off to have maybe done the uh, railing in black brass? Now, I realized that the, br the black brass will also chip off. I, I know that's, you, you think, and I've said this probably three times before, the brass does not, does not turn black. It forms an oxidation on the outside of the brass that, turn, that is black or dark and uh, gives the illusion of the brass being black. And it does chip off. So, uh, it, you know, I, and then, and then let's say that I was to, to do the railing in, in the black brass, and then when I was forming it or working with it, I chipped off the, the, the brass coating, and there was, you know, brass glinting through here and there. How would you paint over it with black brass? So, so maybe, you know, using the, the, or the brass black, rather, uh, is not a good idea, uh, on the railing, that is. But... It did work out good on the ladder before, and I'm hoping it will again. 
and I'm almost, I'm 99% sure it will, it will work good on this piece right here. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to do the uh, time lapse thing again, uh, so we can watch it turning, turning uh, 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 color. Um, I'll probably be agitating it as we go, probably about once every 30 seconds or so, which uh, to you will be about once every second, because uh, I'm going to speed it up probably about 30 times or more. Anyway, let's get at it here. Now I was going to mix up my 50-50 solution of uh, water uh, and uh, brass black, and uh, then I, s I realized that, you know, there, there could be, you know, fingerprints and stuff like that on the brass. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to use the ultrasonic cleaner. I, I, won't, uh, I won't use Windex, I'll just use the uh, airbrush cleaner. And uh, I won't show it being done, but and that's what I'm planning to do here. Uh, at least that's the plan at the moment. Now because this airbrush cleaner that I just used does have a tendency to leave sort of a, a soapy residue on the parts, uh, like when I'm cleaning my airbrush nozzle and so on, I can, I can feel it on my fingers, sort of, sort of soapy feeling to it. I'm going to uh, rinse the parts off with isopropyl. Okay. Now these tweezers, you probably can't see it, but they're kind of hooked together like this. I don't normally use these ones, but the idea is that there's not too much chance of this, this piece slip, slipping out of there. So this uh, thing is almost full here. Okay, now maybe you can get a, an idea of what I was talking about when I was saying the tweezers are kind of like a pair of pinchers on an, on an ant or something. <laughs> I don't know if this mixes it better than putting something in there and just stirring it around or not, but the thought sort of crossed my mind a few minutes ago, why not just draw it back up into the pipette and then squeeze it out. It should mix it up pretty good, I would think. All right, so we got our ratio now of 50% uh, brass black and 50% water. Because if you remember, we concluded that that, was, that worked out pretty good before. All right, let's get the macro lens. Whoops, don't spill it, Ron. Let's get the macro lens on and uh, move in nice and close and uh, do the time lapse thing. Okay. I'm going to try and agitate these at least 
once per minute. And uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, let's start our time lapse now. I do believe I'm getting better at this agitating. Looks like I scratched some of it off here. That wasn't a good idea, I guess. Okay, this time I'm going to be a little bit more careful how I pick it up. Okay, that was my timer for 10 minutes. And uh, I think it's, to you it will look black. At least that's the way it looks on the monitor. I can kind of see that there's a little bit of brass underneath there. But I, I think it's about as good as the, the last time we did this same little piece. There's not a whole lot we can do here now until we get set up for painting. I think most of these will stick down on the little rotating blocks. Uh, this one here is, is too big to do in the rotator. I'll just hold that by hand again. But uh, all these parts, they'll work great on the rotator. Um, yeah, just sort of thinking out loud here again. And th this is the part here that uh, that photo edge piece that we had to go, what was it, number 40 or? Anyway, this one right here. It goes on this part right here. But we can't stick it on until after this is painted, so. And I try to get it as centered as possible so that as it rotates it doesn't wobble, if you know what I mean. Now as for this piece right here, it could be that it's just a little bit too tall. And yes, it's standing there more or less right now. But I think that the airbrush is probably going to blow it over. And, uh, it, well, if it does, I guess what I can do is I can just hold on to it from the uh, base there somehow with a pair of tweezers and just do it by hand. Well, we'll give it a try anyway. Don't know if I'm going to be painting today or not. Whoops, it went right through. Pushed too hard. Okay. Now these front three pieces, they're going to be done in the number 22 gray um, because I want them to look like uh, the, the superstructure of the, of the ship, uh, like the bulkheads and the, the side of the hull and so on. Um, but as for these other pieces, and, and including the, uh, the, uh, the guns, I'll probably do them in the 77. No, pardon me. The the deck is going to be the 77. So what what could this be, 66? Anyway, we'll figure it out when we get there. As for this piece here, I should maybe see where it goes as to what, what color it should be or what shade of gray. Uh, the reason being is that I want it different to whatever it's going to be up against. As I've said before, I want these smaller pieces to sort of stand out and not blend in. For some reason, today's episode is not uh, flowing. Uh, 
Not that I'm not having a good time here, it's just that it's not flowing. <laughs> yeah, I got a lot of editing yet to do here. Like whenever I involve time lapse, uh, which I haven't edited out yet and tried to get tweaked up just right, uh, it always takes a lot longer. So even though it's uh, not even one o'clock here in Winnipeg yet, that is 1 p.m. Uh, I'm going to wrap this uh, this episode up, and uh, it doesn't mean that I'm not going to come back here to the model table uh, late this afternoon and maybe work on this some more. And, and if I do, I'll, I'll video it, but it'll be attached to tomorrow's video. Uh, yeah. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and all being well. We'll see you tomorrow.